Okay, how's everybody doing? Good. 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 So what I want to do is I want to try to bring you up to a, a certain level of understanding chiropractors because you all work with chiropractors in some degree or another. Yeah. And we've been talking about chiropractic the last few months, right, at these meetings. Yeah. So who wants to tell me what a subluxation is? Shauna? It's a bone that's twisted or not quite in place. Right. Especially in your spine. And what's the effect that it has? Um, it cuts off the nerve pathways. Right. In and out. You guys understand that, right? You realize that when I explain it to you, remember about the joints having nerve endings when they're not moving, they don't send information to the brain, that about 40% of the chiropractors don't know that? Really? Yeah. Oh. So when you're talking to them, some of them buy the old theory of bone out of place. Here's the hole, the bone gets out of place, pinches the nerve, and all of a sudden the nerve stops working. Um, that's not actually how it works all the time. That does happen, but it's the information to the brain that gets cut off. Do you understand that? That's uh, the guys. Hey, the guys who teach neurology, or the guys who have diplomates in neurology and chiropractic. Here, put this back there. Do you guys know what a diplomate is? No. Yeah. You guys know what a DC is? No. Doctor, doctor, doctor of chiropractic. chiropractic. So do you guys know what a doctorate is? Yeah. yeah. It's the highest level in learning. And if you become a doctor and you have a doctorate, you could then get a diplomate, which is a specialty in a certain area. So there's chiropractors that are diplomates in rehab. There's chiropractors that are diplomates in neurology, in um, radiology. What was the other one? Oh. So if you're talking to these guys, they might say, well, I have a diplomate in neurology. You're supposed to go, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> or I have a diplomate in rehab. So the rehab protocols in chiropractic were based on Yonda. Do you remember that name? Yeah. Vladimir Yonda. Vladimir Yonda. So Yonda is the guy that Colleen and I studied to create our program. And we actually have guys that are diplomates in rehab. So he's a diplomate in rehab. And he said, this is what he said to us. He goes, you know, I probably know more about Yonda than you do. And I go, yeah, you probably do. He goes, but I never put it together in a system like this. <laughs> and I go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, so what you're dealing with is <coughs> basically a chiropractor is a doctor, just like an MD is a medical doctorate. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you guys know what a DO is? Doctor of osteopath. What's the difference between a DO and an MD? Not necessarily. So I'm going to give you a little back history on that, but that was a common philosophy. Osteopathy was around at the time that medical uh, and chiropractic came about. Chiropractic, medical was first. Anybody know when medical started? 1850? 1848. That's when the AMA was formed. Um, they were called allopaths. Have you ever heard of that term? Yes. yes. What does that mean? Treatment by opposite? Yeah. Uh, the other guys literally is what it means. Oh. Allo means other. Okay. So they're the other treatment because nobody would ever believe that anybody would do that stuff. I'm not kidding. So um, you have osteopath, and what's osteo mean? Bone, so movement of bone. So uh, this doctor still was around back in the 1890s, and he was doing osteopathy, and he was teaching it. And what happened was the AMA saw them as the enemy and went after them first. And they pursued him, fought him in court, tried to get him arrested for practicing medicine without a license, and they finally got, did you have a question? No, the medical doctors, allopath. allopath. <laughs> See, if you look up okay. allopath or allopathy, yeah. that is medicine, traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. okay. And allo means other. So uh, treatment of pathology by other means. It comes from using pharmaceuticals. You know what the word pharmaceutical means? We have any good dictionaries here? <laughs> 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 Spelling might be off, but pharma comes from uh, EU. Yeah. yeah. Pharmakos, which is Greek, which means poison and witchcraft. What? <laughs> I'm not making that up. Why they picked that name, I don't have a clue. But that is what it means. You know, if you look at the meanings of words, you can learn a lot from it. So anyway, getting back to um, what we're talking about, the allopaths, the MDs, and the DCs, so we both go to school. After they attacked Still, they actually, Still was the guy leading the osteopaths, they cornered him and they said, basically, we'll let you join the AMA, but you have to let us set your curriculums in school, and Dr. Still has to go into retirement. So they agreed to it. And what did they do? Uh, the AMA, AMA got rid of all the manipulation 
and added pharmaceuticals. So if you go into a hospital now and you see a doctor in a hospital, you'd have to look at his name tag to see if he was an MD or a DO. Both the same. Um, most of the, met the DO schools, most, stop making manipulation mandatory. I had a patient my first year in practice whose wife, she was the wife of a DO. And I said to her, why do you come to me? Why do not you get your husband to do this? She, he goes, she, he doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have a clue. They don't teach that in school. So, so they could do it, but they don't know how to do it. Well, since the it. studies have come out on chiropractic in the last 50 years, um, now they're starting to lean back to putting it back into their education. What was your question? I just want to make sure a manipulation means adjustment? No, the, the war on words. Chiropractors call it an adjustment because what sounds more specific, manipulation or adjustment? adjustment? Which sounds more positive, manipulation or adjustment? adjustment. Which one does the AMA want us to use? Manipulation. manipulation. Which one do the chiropractors want to use? Adjustment. adjustment. So it's a war on words. Oh, do you understand okay. that? So if you say manipulation to a chiropractor, some of them will get insulted. Yes. Right? So I didn't know a whole lot about this, so I called a friend of mine who I did a radio show with. His name is Ben Briggs. He's a compounding pharmacist, so he's a really smart guy. And I started talking to him about it, and he said, yeah, transdermal is how they used to make all the pain medication. Right. See, the thing is, if you have pain in your shoulder, if you put transdermal cream on, it goes into your shoulder. You get up the same ingredients in a pill, now it's going to go everywhere in your body. Yeah. So to get the same amount in your shoulder, you have to take a much stronger dose. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a smaller pill, it's a much higher concentration. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, Ben, why do they do that? And he goes, what are you, stupid? They're trying to sell more of the drug. <laughs> <laughs> so they raised the price on it. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So we started using transdermal creams in our office, and what happens is this. When you become a dispensing pharmacy, which we did, when you, you basically, the patient comes in and let's say you want to give them cream X, they type in Cremex to the computer. Have you ever been to a pharmacy and got a prescription filled for anybody? Yeah. Yeah. And they go, oh, hold on a second, we've got to put that together. Did you ever hear that? Yeah. And they make you sit there for minutes? Yeah. They're not putting anything together. They're going on the computer and they're typing in your information with your prescription and they're waiting for the following message to come back. X amount is on the way. Dollar amount? The dollar amount. Wow. This is how much you just got sent electronically. So instant feedback. It's already there. And I said, what about the audit? There's no audits at pharmacy. They can't go back and audit that? No, they get paid instantly. I'm like, there's no audit? Nope. Not in the pharmacy world, only in doctors. They harass the crap out of the doctors. There's no audit in the pharmacy world. So we're looking and we get these companies con contacting us saying, here, here's different prescriptions you could have in your pharmacy. We're like, no, we only want these compounding creams. Well, the compounding creams, they would keep Denying them, we'd have to get new ones. We'd keep denying them. But what stayed on there was the regular medications that we could have been distributing, which we wouldn't distribute. And it was something like this. Colleen looks on there and it says, Oxycontin. And the doctor has to spend $900 to get that to come in. And he gets paid $16,000. What? what? For the bottle. Or for whatever. Or some, some, she was like, and they're like, oh yeah, a lot of doctors are doing that. You remember driving in Florida when they had the billboards up that would say, uh, got pain or need meds yeah, or, yeah. that's what he was doing. People, would, they'd call up that number, he'd say, this is where my office is, it was right near the sign, they'd take the exit, they'd pull up, he'd walk out, he'd give them the prescription, and he was already getting paid by the insurance company. Wow. I think they just shut down one place that was selling Oxycontin, and it was, they ended up looking at the prescriptions and there was, actually prescribed something like 10 prescriptions a month of this Oxycontin for every man, woman, and child in the entire city. And they realized something was wrong because they were yeah. with the opioid, whatever. Right. They're finally starting to unravel a little, but it's a long ways away. Well, this, this whole thing, it's like the whole scam. Why do they get these groups to fight with each other? There's fighting in chiropractic. Did you know there's like more than one chiropractic group? Yeah. So there's the ICA and the ACA, and they hate each other because they don't want anybody to pay attention to this stuff. Because if you pay attention to that stuff, you're going to go, that's where all the money's going, not into healthcare, not into physical therapy. If you deal with people that have physical therapists, you realize physical therapy benefits are being cut all over the country. Why? To save money on healthcare. What's a physical therapist get paid? 
Not much. During the year. If they're doing if they're doing a one hour visit with you, that's forty units. That's probably about one hundred twenty bucks. One hundred twenty bucks. And they're cutting their coverage to save money on healthcare. It's like really, let's kill everybody around us except for us, so we can preserve that income. So let me tell you a little bit about the ICA versus the ACA because that's something you should be armed with if you're talking to a chiropractor on the phone. What does it stand for? ICA is International Chiropractic Association. ACA is American Chiropractic Association. Got it? Mm -hmm. um, so there's one end that is, have you heard the term straight versus mixers? Yeah. No. Straight is like pure chiropractic, right? Like they'll do nothing else. Mixers are the ones. It's just integrated. The the extreme of this would be anybody who's got any disease at all in the world. Um, all they need is an adjustment, right? And we'll never give this person medication. We'll never do a surgery on them. All we're gonna do is adjust. Somebody could be having a heart attack and they adjust them. That's the extreme. There's not many people around it. Oh, the extreme over here is chiropractic adjustment. Chiropractic manipulations are addictive and shouldn't really be done, and these guys should be prescribing medication. Oh, really? There's not many of them either. That's the spectrum. Those are but that's the spectrum. Okay. Most of the chiropractors fall somewhere here. Okay. Right? But some lean towards being straight, some lean towards being a mixer. So the guys that lean towards being straight consider themselves pure chiropractic and they follow the teachings of the original founder, D.D. Palmer and B.J. Palmer. Have you ever heard any of your clients talk about those guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, they believe that we should only be adjusting and not giving any medication, not doing any type of injection, any type of rehab. When I went to school, life, where I went, was considered a straight school. We couldn't even talk about using ice packs on patients. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. Yeah. But I went there because I wanted to learn how to adjust. And they had the reputation of being the best adjusters. <clears throat> they are. Um, but the mixers, this would be like National and Chicago, they tend to be, they're as hard as a medical school to graduate, or harder, probably. Mm -hmm. um, these are really academic people. So somewhere in there is where we should be. But the, these two tariffs have been created to start this war with each other so that nobody would actually get along. If the chiropractors are fighting with each other, they'll never get their act together to fight the real enemy, which is the pharmaceutical companies. Do you understand that? Yeah. yeah. So when you're dealing with these guys, just realize that they say, well, I'm a straight chiropractor. One of the things that's appealing about our program is, I was a straight chiropractor. I wasn't all the way over here, but I was pretty darn straight. Like, for example, when my daughter Lauren broke her wrist when she was 12, I, you know, it was a hairline fracture, but, you know, kids in pain, you know, you broke a bone, you know, it's painful. So the doctor's like, we gotta give her morphine, we gotta do this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. She's never had a drug in her life. Give her a Tylenol. I never medicated her, I never had a drug in her life. I'm like, try it. So I think he gave her a Tylenol with codeine or something, but not what he wanted to give her. And she was out of pain like 15 minutes. He's like, I've never seen that happen before. I said, you never saw a kid who never took drugs before. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So I was on this end, and when I became medically integrated, a lot of people were like, their minds blew. I was given an award being the, uh, it was a Purpose Car Achievement Award. I was given for being purpose, chiropractors tend to be on the straight side because they have a strong purpose. What makes me unique is I'm also a business guy and our program brings in medical people. So it was like people, sometimes when people hear it, they're like, you know, I, I, this just doesn't make sense. I'm sure you guys have heard clients say, yeah. I've never, never heard of somebody being straight and having an integrated practice. Mm -hmm. Or I never thought I'd consider this until I saw this model. Yep. That's why. Do you understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely lean to this side. Mm -hmm. But there's good stuff over here. Um, these guys, when I went to school, we were taught that the medical people were the devil. <laughs> and that the physical therapists were the devil. And that's right. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But um, I came from that background. But I realized that they're not the devil. So medical doctors, this is why I say this, if you've been to any of the trainings, I'll say this to our clients. Um, medical doctors, 80% of them went to school to learn how to help people. Chiropractors, 80% of them went to school to learn how to help people, right? Yeah. And 20% uh, of both professions you want to stay away from. When I say that, it gets the guys who were straight to start opening their mind to these guys. And that's all true. If you go on the OIG website, remember what I mean? 
by the OIG, yep. Office of the Inspector General. Yep. That's who investigates doctors for fraud for Medicare. Yep. If you look at their website as to the number of people who go to jail for health care fraud, it's one chiropractor to every 10 medical doctors. But that's because there's 10 times as many medical doctors. Hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. So the proportions are exactly the same. So when I say that to clients, I'm saying that to calm their fears about the medical person. You've got to realize, when these people are talking about hiring a medical person, they're scared to death. I'm sure some of you coaches could tell stories about people that were like, I talked to a guy and he was normal. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, because they're like expecting a medical doctor going to go, what do you got going on here? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're 99% of the time they're really surprised yeah. at what they find. Yeah. When I first started interviewing, I mean, I, I went to a, a conference and there was somebody standing there talking about medically integrated practice. And I sat there and listened to it for three minutes. I got walked out of the guy. I'm like, there's no way I'm ever going to do this, ever. And um, finally, I ended up, when I did that, I said, uh, if I do this, I'm going to do it on my terms. It's going to be a purpose practice. And I started thinking larger than just me and started thinking, okay, I have this philosophy, but is there anything over here that's worth any value? And yeah, there was. Like the injections, that's why I taught, taught you about the injections. We're trying to break the adhesions by putting fluid in the joint, not necessarily cortisone, but a safe, like, like lidocaine, very safe, or tremeal or serapin, very safe. It breaks the adhesions. And we're doing that so we can help these people get better. That's something that a chiropractor can't do. A medical person has to do that. But when we break down this barrier, all of a sudden now we have advantages because we're a medical office. So I had to think of this. I've probably told you this before, but bear with me. I had to think, do I want to be a chiropractic office with a medical doctor or a medical person, or do I want to be a medical office with a chiropractor? Have I ever talked to you about this before? No. Okay, so, so bear with me. So I had to think about that. So I'm going to walk you through it right now so you can understand where we're coming from. Most chiropractors built their practice to be pretty successful, and they are the person that brought them in. It's called a personality-driven practice. And I had a personality-driven practice. We were doing 700 visits a week, and it was mostly because I went out and spoke to the community and brought them back in. Right? Um, so I was the big, you know, I had the big head, and I'm the guru, and I'm the guys that are all here for it, and if it wasn't for me, this whole place would fall apart, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And then I started thinking, after a while, you know, I can never leave. I'm a slave to this practice. If I'm not here, the patient's like, where's Dr. Carver? Where's Dr. Carver? Are you here, here today? And I'd walk through the office, and the guys would be adjusting, and all of a sudden they'd be like, can you adjust me today? I'd always get this. I'd be walking, and they'd go, can you adjust me today? I think like your adjustment better, and he doesn't always know what it is. After a while, I was like, I couldn't do anything. And I started thinking, things are better adjust. It was Dave Marks. Things are better adjuster than me. That's who adjusts me. <laughs> He's definitely better adjust. Why do they want me to adjust them? So then I started thinking, you know what? What percentage of the population go to a chiropractor? 10%. 10%. So what percentage doesn't go? 90. 90. 90. And we'll see how much you guys have been paying attention. What's the number one ailment that Americans suffer with? Back pain. Back pain. Chronic degenerative arthritis and back pain. So we're missing 90% of that market. So of course I don't want to be a chiropractic office with a medical person. I want to be in a medical office with a chiropractor, which also gives me the ability to step out of the limelight. And I can open up more than one practice. If I couldn't cross that bridge, excuse me, I couldn't do AMI. Because I'd be in an office somewhere adjusting people right now. You understand that? And I was a good adjuster. But my talents are better spent getting other practices to do that. Because instead of seeing 700 this week, now I feel like I see 7,000 people a week, or whatever our, all our clients together see. Maybe even more than that. Doing the math 20, right now. Uh, yeah. Sorry. 15,000? 15,000 a week. I like that better. And they don't know who I am, and I don't really care. It's <laughs> probably more than that, actually. Probably yeah. is. I just but, so, so think about this. To have a medical practice, you have to have medical people that are trained on the philosophy and purpose of the business. And they're able to make decisions for the patient so that the patient goes through the right venue. So that's why we came up with all the systems. By putting these systems in place, the medical person are doing the intake. If they're trained on the system, they know. Like, see, when we didn't have systems, the medical people bring somebody in and they go, oh, you have knee pain? And we are like, okay, we're going to the medical doctor. And they come out with a prescription. <laughs> see it? <laughs> What'd you do? Well, they had knee pain. I wrote them a script for knee pain. Why'd you do that? What else do you do? Right? Or they didn't know. They ordered x-rays. We had a patient come in that had a bad knee, right? And he'd come out with A to P and lateral x-rays of the knee. 
Now, you guys tell me what x ray should be taken based on what I taught you last week. Both knees. Both knees. And what else? Hips. Hips. And what Hips. else? Ankles. And what else? Back. 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 Shoulders. Back. 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 Remember, hurt back, head goes forward, right? Yeah. You change the Q angle, knees go bad. So they weren't doing this. They didn't understand the holistic philosophy, so we had to teach them. That's what we do with the two day trainings. The two day trainings, the main person that should be there is the medical person. Because we're teaching them about how to order x rays and what a care plan is like and how long they're going to be seen and how, what we're going to do on this visit. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So that's why we have all these different things put together. We want our guys to recognize, and you've got to believe it, it's, you're asking them to, to wrestle the biggest thing in their world. Give up the limelight to put systems in place to let other people do their job. What happens if you micromanage people and you don't let them do their job or, or, or do their... You lose them. Right, yeah, why? You're taking away you're doing all the work. You know? Yeah, and you're taking away the what? Initiative. The initiative. Their sense of... Um, Self-determination. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you have to be able to empower people. That's what our program is all about. Empowering these medical people to work right alongside the chiropractors to create a medical practice. And the barometer is my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, if she walked into a practice and sat down and they said, okay, so uh, Marianne, the, uh, the nurse practitioner not here today, so uh, Dr. Mike is going to see it. She would go, who's Dr. Mike? Well, he's a chiropractor. And she would go, no, there's only one good chiropractor in the world. It's my son-in-law. <laughs> I don't even let him adjust me. So she, would, <laughs> she would walk out. She's a nurse. She's been a nurse for how long? Since the late 40s. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's, <laughs> you're trying to build a clinic to take care of her. The best thing I ever hear in my clinic is when somebody says, you know, I never thought I'd go to a chiropractor, but I realized that was part of fixing in this program. And I do hear that. Like the last time I was up in Tennessee, they said, Dr. Carberry, this is Joanne, and Joanne's this is her last day. And I'm like, can you take Joanne up to the front? I'm like, okay, so I'm walking up the front, I'm like, so your last day, how'd you do here? And she starts going, oh, you should have seen me when I came in. I couldn't raise my arm, and I was dragging my leg, and I couldn't walk from the car, and blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, starting to talk slower, and, and she's starting to tear up, and she starts crying. She's like, I don't want to leave. And she's hugging me, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens in this clinic. That's the only way we're going to take over healthcare. Do you understand that? Yeah. No. We can't do it being over here throwing sticks at our own people and throwing stones at the medical people. It's never going to happen. We've got to all break down the barriers and work together. And the common theme that everybody agrees upon is, you ask most medical people, and I would never hire somebody who didn't agree with this, do you think we're over-medicated? 60 to 80 percent of them say, Yes, the medical people. That's one of the questions I ask when I'm hiring. Do you think we're over medicated as a nation? Yes. Do you believe in opioids? No. Great. Do you believe in antidepressants? No. You're really even better. <laughs> right? Because they're not getting hired if they say yes to any of those questions. Or, except for the over medicated. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if I got it or I don't think you specified. The ICA and the. So the ICA is difference? International Chiropractic right. Association. Right. What's the difference in the and the American Chiropractic Association. And these guys tend to be on this side of the coin, and these guys tend to be on this side of the coin. However, they're both pretty much in the middle. Is. is the ACA also international? Do they also, can you be part of the ACA if you're they, not in America? They came out with international because they thought it trumped America. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so the ICA is not particularly international. These guys called it the ACA because they were copying the AMA. Oh, I get it. And then these guys went, well, we're not going to do that. We'll be different. We'll be the ICA, yeah. the International Chiropractic <laughs> Association. It was literally just a word of words. So realize this when you're talking to these guys. They might have buttons on rehab or physical therapists. They might have buttons on the medical doctors. They're definitely going to have buttons on the mixers. And, you know, so when you're dealing, especially the marketing people, when you're talking to these people, you might have people slam the phone down. You're a bunch of sellouts. Click. Bam. We're just talking to this person. Wow. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So um, just be aware that, you know, you can say, if they get the, the um, little pamphlet we sent out, how many of you have read that? Yeah, it's got all through it the idea of the philosophy of going from here to here and ending up with a place in the middle. Do you understand that? Because we're trying to get people to realize, see, most other consulting companies, 
their motivation is this. And they're teaching doctors how to make millions of dollars. In fact, most other consulting companies, their arrangement for fees are attached to your collections somehow. So they want you to do very expensive procedures so they can get more money. And the reason they do that is if, if the doctor gets audited, they don't have any ownership, they just disappear and the doctor's stuck holding the bank. And we've had how many clients, if Quinn was here, he could tell you, we've had lots of, where's Quinn? That's uh, we had lots of clients actually come to us after they went through in a relationship like that, and they were telling us the average they were paying consultant a year was $300,000. Oh my God. Who wow. said, oh, don't worry, no money down. <laughs> right? <laughs> the other thing they do is they sell lots of equipment. And it turns out that the consultants own the equipment companies as well. Yeah, and he came to us, he was broke. He's like, I don't know if I can even do this anymore. He had a really successful practice. He had a quarter million dollars on equipment. And it turned out that the consultant that was coaching him owned a lot of the equipment companies. Yeah. Yeah. So we do low-tech rehab. You guys know what low-tech is? Mm -hmm. yep. Versus high tech? I'm a little oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, So the high tech is you're using equipment. The low tech is you have a mat table and somebody working with you and they're telling you how to do the exercise. And because we know how to do the exercise, because we're married to a beautiful physical therapist, <laughs> we do that one. Okay? Mm -hmm. We don't sell the equipment to make a ton of money off of the gym equipment. Yeah. Okay. Unless anything else, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Jeremy so we can do our stats. Cool. All right. Thanks, Mike.